Soul Silva CNC. This is a DIY CNC machine. I bought the plans for this and then modified a whole bunch of stuff. I would really recommend, though, if anybody wants to give this a try, to buy the plans. Um, it's a good baseline and it provides all the templates and explains the way a lot of the parts interact together. Uh, the plans are very good. As is typical for my projects, I did a lot of modifications. Um, the first is a 3D printed holder for the Dremel. This is not the primary cutter that I want to use on this machine. I want to have a regular router in here, but I saw this on Thingiverse and it fits this perfectly. There's threads in there. This screws into the holder and the way I designed this is this bolts into this and a new 3D printed holder can be designed for any router. Um, that makes it very versatile, so we just take these four bolts off, this comes off, and we can mount whatever we want. A lot of 3D printed parts on here. My bushings to hold the bearings fit in those slots. Instead of using the aluminum angled, we've got 3D printed parts here. Another 3D printed part for the bushing for the Y rod. And I did put a little bit of brown tape just to make that a little bit tighter, a little bit more secure. For the back of the Z carriage, the plans call for threaded rod. I didn't like the way that looked, and this was tight enough as it was um, to go with a solid piece. So this was cut out on the small 3040 CNC, and that fits nice and tight. For the Z motor here, I wanted to be able to angle this whole thing back a little bit. So this is a threaded piece of aluminum and the bolt right here fits into a tapped hole and that pulls nice and tight. This is a little bit lower than these so the whole thing can be kind of angled back a little bit. It was leaning a little bit too forward and it was bumping into these rods. For the driver for this CNC, I went real bottom dollar. I've had this for a few years. This is the Toshiba board, the 6560, I believe. And these are around 30 bucks on eBay. Or you can buy a kit that has this as well as three stepper motors. For this design, the original plans call for one stepper motor to run the X axis back and forth. I'm not a fan of belts. And I wanted to do this with regular stepper motors on each side and not a belt. So the way we did this without having a driver board that had four axes was to just put these both on the same line and run them both into the driver board. It's kind of a low rent way to do it, but it works okay. I had to play around with the settings, the draw, the configuration for the motors in mock to kind of balance this out but they're both playing okay so into our X port here we've got both of those stepper motors for a spoil board um, a lot of folks do different kinds of holds down hold downs and I like to have a board that I can screw something into so this is a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and an extra piece was put on the front here and on the back. So these 2x4s have holes drilled through them and then the spoil board just bolts into there. And then when this gets all chewed up we'll just pull it off and put a new board down. One of the most challenging parts of this whole project was the box here for the Z carriage. The tolerances are really tight and drilling holes in steel rod, gas rod, is not my favorite thing to do. I'm real comfortable with a lot of woodworking, but metalworking is not is not what I enjoy. So to hold down those rods while they were going through the drilling process in the in the drill press, I made a little jig to hold these nice and tight to keep those from moving. Another safety feature is putting little acorn nuts underneath it here, because it's amazing how many times you reach under to grab something and it's very easy to rip yourself with the bolts that were under there. 
I've got some dry lube on our rods here just to quiet it down a little bit. It is a loud machine, it just kind of amplifies itself with all the wood supports. I haven't cut anything on here yet. Before I do that, I want to do some wire management and get some rods or something else to hold that up. But as far as driving it around, it works pretty well. This little controller here is very useful. So I've got a home set over on the side. Let's tell it to go back to its origin. So everything is working pretty well. I'm still fine tuning my speeds. It could go a little bit quicker. And we'll get that nailed down at another point. Let's change our settings here to back to the Z. And it's fun just to drive this around after so many hours are spent building it. I know it can fly a lot faster, and those are some things I want to work on. So again, send it back to its origin. And there we are. So a very fun build, took about two, two and a half months to do. Very inexpensive. And the cutting area is pretty large. It should be a little over two feet by two feet. I've got about $450 into this. A lot of the parts I'd had laying around, but if I added them all up, that's about where we'd be. And to have a machine this size for that little amount of money is pretty good. So I'm looking forward to actually doing some cutting on this. We'll get some wire management done, and we'll go from there. So stay tuned for future videos of projects with this machine. Thanks very much for taking a look.